In this video, we're going to compare substitution and elimination reactions, and we're going to talk specifically about the role of heat and how heat favors elimination reactions. Okay, so why might this be? Well, we, let's just go into some details of our substitution and elimination reaction first, and then we can we can talk about the thermodynamics of the process uh, in a moment, and and that will really help to explain why it is that, that thermodynamics favors elimination reactions, especially at high temperatures. So. In our first reaction, I draw out a substitution process, and you'll see actually in both cases the substrates are completely the same, except the products are different. So in this first reaction, we have a substitution. So we're starting with propyl iodide, and we're adding sodium hydroxide, and we're breaking carbon iodine, and we're forming carbon OH, and we're forming sodium iodide. So that's a straightforward substitution reaction. And on the bottom, we are doing an elimination reaction. So we're starting with propyl iodide and we're adding sodium hydroxide and we're forming propene and we get sodium iodide and we have water because OH minus is acting as a base. It's taking, we're breaking the carbon hydrogen bond here and uh, we're going to form oxygen hydrogen and we're going to form the carbon carbon double bond or pi bond and we're going to break carbon iodine. Now what might thermodynamics have to do with each of these reactions? Well let's look at the types of species that the number of species that, that are getting involved in each of these reactions. So in the substitution reaction, we're starting with two species in solution, so the, the iodide and the sodium hydroxide, and then we're ending up with another two. So we're going from two to two products. So two starting in the starting material and two products in, in the reactants, or the, sorry, the products. So on, with our elimination reaction, we're going to start again with two starting materials and we're going to end up in this case with three. So propene, sodium iodide and water, we actually end up with three. So note that we're starting with two to two in substitution, but with elimination, we're going from two to three. So we have, we have an increase. We are increasing, increasing species in solution. Now when we increase the number of species in solution there's going to be more disorder in the solution which is commonly referred to as the definition of entropy. And the entropy remember from thermodynamics is delta S. This is going to have a, a higher delta S than substitution will because we're not really changing the number of species in solution. So delta S is going to be very significant in this elimination reaction. So this ties into thermodynamics further. And when you think about for a given reaction, we can always describe the, the energetics of or the thermodynamic properties of a reaction through this equation, delta G equals delta H. So delta G is the Gibbs free energy. And delta H is the enthalpy. So that's, that term comes mostly from the strengths of the bonds that are formed and broken. And then we subtract T delta S. And remember that for delta G to be favorable, it's going to be negative. So the more negative delta G is, the more favorable the reaction is. So let's think about what happens in a substitution reaction. So in a substitution reaction, as we increase the temperature of this reaction, so from low temperature to high temperature, our delta S our delta S is fairly small for this reaction. So delta S is not going to appreciably change the, the, the energetics of our delta G. We're not going to, as we increase the temperature, as we go from, from low to high, this term is not going to have a tremendous effect. It's going to maybe have a small effect, but not a tremendous one. This is really going to just be dominated by the delta H term. So that's why at at low temperatures, um, we would expect to have, or low temperatures or high temperatures, we'd expect to have uh, roughly the same delta G for a substitution reaction. So roughly the same for low temperature or high temperature, roughly the same. Now for an elimination reaction, an elimination reaction at low temperature we might have uh, 
we keep the temperature term small, so this would not be significant. So delta H would, would dominate over our, let's draw the delta H a little bit bigger to sort of make this a little bit more graphic. Okay, delta H, and then we might have a smaller T delta S term. So our delta G is gonna be dominated by uh, delta H at low temperatures. But as we increase the temperature, so as we heat elimination reactions, what's gonna happen is this larger delta S term, it becomes significant. So as we increase the this number T, as we increase the temperature, this delta S term is gonna to start to become equal or greater to the, the delta H term. And in fact, at, at high temperatures, it can start to dominate. So, it can start to dominate the, the delta H term, so at high temperatures. And at high temperatures, this, this large T delta S term can start to even lead to a delta G, which is going to be lower or more negative than the delta G would be for substitution. So as we increase the temperature, elimination is gonna become I'm gonna have a, 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 a low, more negative, more and more negative delta G compared to the delta G for substitution, which is, we said is gonna remain roughly the same for low temperature or high temperature. So increasing the temperature is gonna make delta G more negative relative to the delta G of substitution, and eventually elimination will dominate at high temperatures. So the bottom line here is elimination will dominate at high temperatures. And that's a very important thing to know about elimination reactions when you're trying to compare them to substitution reactions is that you should really look for the, the role of temperature. And if you see heat, so heat, heat is usually a dead giveaway for an elimination reaction. Not always a dead giveaway, but it is a, fa it is a factor that's going to favor elimination reactions versus substitution reactions. So if you're comparing two otherwise completely identical reactions, if one is at lower temperature and one is at higher temperature, think, keep in mind that higher temperature is gonna favor elimination more than substitution reactions.